Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to take a look at zero downtime deployment. The idea is super simple. You have an application that is running, you want to update that application and you don't want your service to go down for even a millisecond. Okay, a nanosecond. That's how good this stuff is. The example that I'm going to show you in this video is little bits of infrastructure that I've set up myself. You can replace them with other bits of infrastructure. For example, for the reverse proxy, I'm going to be using Yarp. You can be using Nginx. Perhaps you're going to be doing cloud. And by the way, what I'm showing you here, perhaps the cloud provider that you're using is already providing you this service. But just in case this whole cloud thing goes to shit or you have your infrastructure set up in a more customizable way, this is a video for you. So don't forget to check out the description. I have a C-sharp course that is out. Like, subscribe, you know what to do. Let's go ahead and get started. The premise of the idea is that you have an app which is running and you have requests coming in. You want to update the application, so you roll out an update, you restart it, and then it becomes application two. And during the time of the restart, your application goes down, the requests start failing, perhaps it's one, two seconds, maybe it doesn't matter, maybe it matters. For our scenario, it matters, so we actually wanna get rid of this downtime. How do you actually achieve this? Well. If you have your application one, you put a reverse proxy over here, which proxies all of the requests. We spin up our application two and we wait for it to get healthy. Once it is actually healthy, we start directing requests over here. We stop directing requests over there and voila, you have your zero downtime deployment. So here's what we have for our setup. We have our application, we have our deployer component, we have our reverse proxy, and we have your local crackhead. The local crackhead, obviously you're curious what this is, don't worry about it. We have the application, which is just the API, which we're going to be changing. Some stuff that I'm passing over here is meant to represent general metadata. This can be embedded inside the service. It can be besides the service. You can store it in a database. This can be just information that you can read off of your machine. Here I have information like which process ID is this occupying? And then also an environmental ID. So for example, I'm starting up a process. Which build is it? What version of the application that I'm running? Something to identify that indeed this is this box one. If you're running stuff in the cloud, perhaps this is going to depend on the host, on the IP address, because when the second box container is starting up, it's going to be on a different IP. Okay, so the application is really simple. We're going to be replacing this string every single time we deploy it. You can see here that we're capable of starting up this application on different ports. Let's close this down. We then have the deployer, which performs most of the, let's say, complicated logic. And it goes something like this. We have an HTTP client with a really, really small timeout. We are going to try to get the internal health, which is just a health check endpoint from the current service, which uh, for our range, we just have two slots. If we call it five seconds, we time out, we go to the next port, five seconds, we time out. That means none of the services are running. Let's actually deploy the base service. So I'm just spitting up some process start information. I'm spinning up the process. I'm forgetting about it. Application finishes and the thing runs in the background. The process over here, if you've ever hosted stuff on Linux, this is going to be your system D service. If you're doing containers instead of this whole thing, you're going to have containers. And instead of using this, API, you're going to be using the Docker API. Okay, you can see here, I'm configuring things like which port do I want to start this on? And also just an environmental ID. Again, this can actually be an actual environment ID. I didn't want to set anything on my machine because well, it's one big computer here. So anyway, let's assume that we have one application running over here. And what the deployer wants to do is he wants to say, all right, this is healthy. Let's then spin up a second application right over here. However, if we're in the scenario where this application is already running, we want to say, okay, we actually want to spin up this A1 on port 5100. Okay, so we get the health check. We start the service on the other port, which is not going to be running. Once the service is then started, we are just polling and this while loop is essentially about 
waiting for this new service to actually start up. Once it has started, we're going to go ahead and reconfigure our reverse proxy to start pointing at the new port. Finally, I'm going to delay this by just one second and then kill the process. The killing here is optional. And what the killing will do is it will take this application one that we had over here. And once we started pointing to application two, it will kill this process. Potentially, you don't want to do the killing. Maybe you want to let that box chill out over there and you're monitoring this A2 instance over here. And if something starts to go wrong, guess what? All you have to do is just say, okay, okay, okay. Let's back out, start pointing at A1 again, and then you actually kill off this A2 process. So the application that I have over here is 60 lines of code. You can imagine that this could be a web service. This could be a step-by-step -step thing. An SRE engineer can come in and press a button. Yes, I want this to be released or I want to start rolling things back. Hopefully you get the picture. Now on this local host over here, we're going to go to the program CS. This is a reverse proxy project, which is using adverse proxy, but hopefully you've watched my YARP reverse proxy video where here we're also just using YARP. If you don't know anything about YARP, I highly recommend you watch that video. What we're doing over here is setting up some base configuration. We have the two potential clusters that we could be pointing at and the route configuration is going to be pointing at this default cluster over here. When I'm calling this endpoint to switch the configuration, I am just changing the port and updating the route configuration to point at a different cluster. So for 5101, we're gonna go to 5101, right? So super simple. If you're using something like Nginx, Caddy, it's not gonna be quite as easy to manipulate as perhaps an app settings.json file or just a C-sharp object. It's gonna be an Nginx file, so perhaps you're gonna to need to template something. If your load balancer is a cloud service, it's gonna be an API call, okay? Similar to what it is here. All right, here are our applications. And let me close those. Uh, the local crackhead is quite a simple application as well. We start up a loop, which is going to try to read from a channel and we're trying to read a string. If the string is null, it's an error. If it's not null, it's a success. And then we also output the result. We then have 10 HTTP requests happening simultaneously, trying to hit this endpoint. And this is just to illustrate that whatever gaps we're going to have in between this configuration update or a rolling out of the new service, we're trying to hit the API as much as possible. If the service goes down for a second or something or a little itsy bitsy millisecond, right, we should see the error count going up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We are going to start the reverse proxy. Let me close all the other terminals. .NET run. So the reverse proxy has started. Let's open it up. Currently, it is going to be erroring because there isn't actually any backend that is deployed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the application. I'm going to build it for release. So build dash C release, and I'm going to output it to a special folder dot output. Okay. It's going to be right over here. And while it's over here, my deployer is specifically pointing to this folder. So when I'm running the .NET command, I'm kind of expecting my output to be here, okay? If I then open up the deployer in the terminal, I'll .NET run. This starts the application on port 5100. If we open it up, we will see this is a new thing being printed to the browser. If I come back to the reverse proxy, I refresh, we will see the same thing, okay? Now, if we come back and I will go to the app, program CS, we're going to change it slightly. Hopefully it shouldn't come as a surprise if we come back over here, nothing is going to change on either side because we just changed the code, we didn't rebuild it, we haven't even spun up a new service, right? So with the change, we wanna go ahead, rebuild it, and then effectively push the new build to our backend somewhere in the cloud, essentially put the build somewhere over there and do the update. So when the update happens, now this service on 5100 should be down. The new service on 5101 should be up. So here are the changes and the reverse proxy should be pointing to the new thing. Okay. If we now do this whole setup with the crackhead running, so I'll open the crackhead, we're going to run him. And here's what we're going to see. So, so far, everything is successful. If I'm going to go over here, I'm going to run the redeployer. We're going to come back over here. 
And while we're making all of these requests, and I've actually realized I've not updated anything in the app. So we did the rollover, but without any changes. So let's actually introduce some kind of changes. Uh, over here, instead of hello world, I'm just gonna say hello, Anton. Again, come back to the app. We're gonna produce a new output. We're gonna then, whoop, not click on that. Let's come back, redeploy. Once that has been redeployed, we should see a new result over here. Again, no errors. Because remember, what is happening is we have one app, the reverse proxy. Once we have ensured that this new service is healthy, we just go ahead and repoint the arrow over here. Okay, definitely not trying to draw dicks on my screen. Let's stop the crackhead. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. A nice, short and sweet. More than anything, the video is a demonstration of the process. All of the components, the deployer, the reverse proxy, the application, the crackhead, all of them are swappable. You can replace them with Nginx, your own application. Perhaps you have something like Octopus, Azure Pipeline, Bash Script, actual cloud services, whatever it is that you're using. If you have downtime and you want to get rid of it, understand that as long as you follow this process of being able to wait for a machine to spin up and it being healthy, you can go ahead and switch the traffic. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you actually want me to replicate this in a cloud environment, go ahead and drop a comment. Which cloud environment would you like me to replicate this in? If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on my Patreon. You will be part of the group to which I say, a very big and special thank you because you are directly supporting my work and you help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.